You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. What is up, my friends? What are we talking about today? Downtown Seattle businesses. Yep, the peaceful protesters at it again. Doing some damaging. Not quite so peaceful. We're going to get into that. Also, there's a riot declared in Portland in the wake of the Minneapolis police shooting. That's what we're talking about today. If you are new here, my name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of side hustle real estate companies that have been in existence for 20, 30 years, but they're side hustles. Don't worry about that. I mean, they're virtually startups. People like that when I say that because it's ridiculous, right? Whole thing. Oh, I got this side hustle going. All right, great. Me, not so much. I've got the main hustles and then this is kind of a side hustle, but I like doing this more and I like being with you guys more than telling people which form to to fill out on a, you know, purchase and sale agreement. Uh. All right, let's jump on into it. This is Q13 Fox, right? Declared in Portland after deadly Minneapolis police shooting. I think, I think Minneapolis is just going to go up in flames. I think that is going to be, that's a tinderbox already. The whole George Floyd thing, you got this other incident that happened. Ooh, not a good look. This, it, any which way the Derek Chauvin trial goes, I think Minneapolis, I think it goes up in flames. And I think you're seeing the beginning of it right here. Um, and that's why we're going to, we're going to start covering that pretty hard because today is the first day of the, um, defense in trial in the Derek Chauvin. And I think they're going to bring up a bunch of stuff that's going to hammer home enough reasonable doubt. Whereas I think those jurors are going to have a tough time. They're going to have a brutal time. They're going to say, oh my gosh, if we acquit this guy, Minneapolis and, and a lot of these other cities like Seattle are just going to go. The peaceful protesters are going to go bananas. Let's get into it. Police say several businesses were vandalized in downtown Seattle marches Monday night. That was last night in protest of the police shooting of Dante Wright in Minnesota. While in Portland, police declared a riot. I think they did in, in Minneapolis too, right? Uh, National Guard. Wright 20 was shot and killed during a traffic stop in Brooklyn Center, the city of about 30,000 people on the northwest border of Minneapolis. We've all seen that story. Got to let that story play out. Got to see what the actual facts were. I know the police officer uh, resigned today that um, is involved in that horrible incident. What are you going to say? We're going to have to wait for the, the facts to come out. I don't want to comment too much on that because – you, you know, you've always got some jackass out there going, oh, well, this is what I think when you don't have the full facts, right? Police in Seattle posted pictures and video on their Twitter account showing smashed storefronts along Fifth Avenue in downtown Seattle. Here's from Seattle Police Department. This is a tweet. Police, can you believe it? We get our news from Twitter now, right? From Twitter and from, from real estate guys on the YouTube. It's our world coming to. Police are monitoring a group marching hashtag downtown. Multiple businesses along Fifth Avenue have been vandalized as the group marches southbound. But don't worry, they are peaceful. Police have given multiple warnings to not block traffic and keep demonstrations peaceful. Group currently at Fifth Avenue and Columbia Street. Got kind of three photos here on the tweet that I'm looking at. One is the impact with a massive, the window isn't blown out. This is one of those big storefront windows. It's not blown out, but man, it is uh, shattered. That window is going to have to be taken out. And then we've got some um, Black Lives Matter graffiti, not even good graffiti, just really marginal graffiti. I mean, you guys need to, I mean, if you're going to do that, make it worthwhile. Uh, and we've got no peace and F12 and Black Lives Matter. Just no real effort into this. I don't know. No arrests were made. In Portland, police declared a riot as they say people began hurling rocks, fireworks, and bottles at them outside a government building. Garbage cans were also set on fire in the streets. They're going to have to do what I think $150,000 or $115,000 worth of work to the parks by the federal buildings in downtown Portland. I say hold off on that work. Let's let this summer pass because there is zero point in fixing any of this stuff if Rome is just going to burn, right? That's the way I see it. Just let this stuff go until we've kind of passed uh, some of this. But you got to get through that George Floyd um, trial. This is, not, this is just not going to be a good one. Police say people also cut through a chain lane fake fence at one of their police bureaus and began to slash tires on police cruisers and break windshields. So the peaceful protesters slashing police tires who, when you call 911, need to go out and answer your call. 
How self sir uh, This is just ridiculous, right? And they're breaking police cars, windshields. I say arrest those guys and throw them in jail. Peaceful protesters or not, lock them up. Lock them up for a while. I'm not okay with that. That is some nonsense. They are now asking for the public's help in identifying those suspects. Good. Lock them up. Give them a six-month sentence. Let them cool their jets. Hey, that peaceful protesting you were doing, a little bit of tagging you were doing, yeah, we're not okay with that. This is enough of an incident where we're going to start handing out some severe consequences. You're going to sit and cool your jets for six months. How about that? County lockup. Just let them sit there. Think about their deeds. Okay, here's another one from Portland Police. A crowd of about 200 have gathered near the Kelly Penumbra building. Projectiles, including bottles, rocks, and large fireworks have been thrown at police. Windows have been broken. Ugh. It's starting. I'm telling you, it's starting again. You and I both know this. We're aware of this. I, I think you're going to have to deal with this all summer long. This is just... This is just going to be a crazy, crazy one. That's my opinion anyway, because I don't think there's any way we're kind of getting past this um, without just a whole bunch of windows broken and all kinds of other stuff. All right. So that's that's what's happening in downtown Seattle. And we got it going on in Portland. I'm now going to read um, kind of the underlying of that. And this is from the Daily Mail. We're going to read just kind of what's out there in the media right now on the whole Minneapolis thing. Minneapolis black man 20 was shot dead by cop after being pulled over for air freshener hanging from mirror. Okay, so we don't even know if that is the reason why he was pulled over on a traffic violation. You got to let the facts come out. And the police often don't respond to this stuff until a few days later. In the meantime, media just runs with all kinds of stories that may or may not be correct. So when you see this stuff, just kind of know in your head, all right, that's what's out there. But this may or may not be true. And reasonable people like you and I, we read through the, the news because so much of this stuff, we read through and read between the lines because so much of this stuff is just flat wrong. It's just wrong. Just 10 miles from, um, and we had the air freshener hanging from the mirror. It's why I got pulled over. Maybe. Yeah, we don't really know. And this happened just 10 miles from where George Floyd was killed. National Guard is deployed as looting and rioting break out. All right, let's go down and let's get to the guts of this. Police find, police fired tear gas and rubber bullets as looting and violent protests raged in a Minneapolis suburb overnight. After officers shot dead a 20 year old black man during a traffic stop less than 10 miles from where George Floyd was killed. The National Guard was called in and a curfew was imposed to quell angry demonstrations over the shooting death of Dante Wright on Sunday in the Brooklyn Center neighborhood. The unrest came just hours before the trial of Derek Chauvin. The former Minneapolis police officer charged with murdering George Floyd was set to resume in a courtroom on Monday. Did they? I forgot to look. I think there was talk of them holding off on running the trial. Um, I know they, the judge basically said the jurors cannot be sequestered. Even with this stuff going on, I don't know how you're going to get, you know, I don't know how you're going to get a, uh, a, a fair jury trial out of this anyway with as much coverage as there is out there. But I guess you got to go with the jurors you've got. Now you, the judge is basically saying, nope, we're not sequestering anybody. We're just running this thing out. Police have released few details about the fatal shooting. They said officers tried to arrest Wright after pulling him and his girlfriend over for a traffic violation at about 2 p.m. on Sunday before realizing he had an outstanding warrant. Officers say that as they tried to arrest him, Wright got back in his car and drove off. Okay. So there is some of the rub that major media is not covering. This dude drove off. An officer fired at the vehicle, striking right, but he continued driving for several blocks before hitting another car. Police have not said if Wright was armed or explained yet why they opened fire. Wright's mother says he called her in the moments before to say police had pulled him over for having an air freshener dangling from his rearview mirror. It is illegal in Minnesota to have anything hanging from a rearview mirror. He was pronounced dead at the scene of the crash, and his girlfriend, who was a passenger in the car, sustained non-life-threatening injuries. And we got a picture of this guy with his one-year-old kid, and he's 20. He's probably 19 when this picture was, was shot. Protesters in the city of Brooklyn Center police officers clash outside the Brooklyn Center Police Department on Sunday night. Got a whole bunch of officers there doing the tear gas thing. 
Yeah, a lot of tear gas deployed. National Guard was called in to calm the chaos and a curfew was imposed to quell angry demonstrators over the shooting death of Dante Wright on Sunday in the Brooklyn Center neighborhood. Um, guy got shot with a rubber bullet, angry protesters, protesters hopping on police cars. What does that prove? I mean, you just you got protesters in the middle of the street with their hands up during uh, when uh, the police had basically said, hey, you got to go home. Police say both officers' body cameras were on and a recording during the incident and were recording during the incident. The state's Bureau of Criminal Apprehension said it was investigating the shooting. So all normal things so far, uh, what happens when a shooting occurs. Wright's mother, Katie Wright, said he called her while he was being pulled over to get insurance information from the vehicle because she recently gave the car to him. She said she, he told her that he had been pulled over because he had air fresheners hanging from his rearview mirror. Police have only said they pulled right over for a traffic violation, but have not yet given details. Describing the call, Wright's mother said, I said when the police officer comes back to the window, put him on the phone and I will give him the insurance information. Then I heard the police officer come to the window and say, put the phone down and get out of the car. And Wright said, why? He said, we'll explain to you when you get out of the car. All right. So basically, didn't follow the instructions, drove off. That's when the real trouble began, right? A minute later, I called and his girlfriend answered, who was the passenger in the car, and said that he'd been shot and she put it on the driver's side and he was laying there uh, lifeless, Katie told Gathered Media on Sunday afternoon. This is just what the mother is saying. She wasn't there. She just heard over the phone. I heard scuffling and I heard police officers say, Dante, don't run. She said through tears, the call ended and she dialed his phone number again. His girlfriend answered and said he was dead in the driver's seat. Wright's mother huddled with loved ones near the scene of the fatal shooting and pleaded for son's body to be removed from the street in the hours that followed the Star Tribune reports. Brutal scenario, right? A Brooklyn Center police officer told people at the scene that the victim's body could not be moved until members of the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, a division of Minnesota's Department of Public Safety, arrived and investigated. All right, and we've got a bunch of pictures of all the rioting that took place. You got people smashing windows, uh, just basically looting, a um, whole bunch of that. As news of Wright's death traveled, about 100 people, some visibly upset, and one carrying a sign demanding justice for George Floyd, confronted police in riot gear. Protests started peacefully, according to eyewitness reports, but soon turned unruly, with demonstrators vandalizing two police vehicles, pelting them with stones, and jumping on them. Wright's mother urged for calm, telling protesters, All the violence, if it keeps going, it's only going to be about the violence. We need it to be about why my son got shot for no reason. We need to make sure it's about him and not about smashing police cars because that's not going to bring my son back. That's a that's a pretty reasonable request from a mom who just had her, her son killed. Hats off to her. I mean, this is just, as a parent, this is a heartbreaking story. No way around it. Whether the kid was right, wrong, indifferent, heartbreaking story, somebody's kid is no longer going to be there and he's got a, a young kid. So all things aside... That to me is where I go. It's like, oh, man, it's happened again. All right. As the evening went on, more people took to the streets and looting broke out in other parts of the city, including a Walmart. As tensions boiled over in scenes all too familiar from last summer's protest and subsequent riots. And that's where I think we are off to the races on this one. And this is just this is just the beginning. Police were seen firing tear gas to disperse angry demonstrators protesting the killing. And National Guard troops were on the scene just before midnight local time as looters broke into some 20 businesses. And that's where I get I get worked up is like, what what message does that carry when you break into a bunch of innocent businesses? The businesses had nothing to do with this. You're just taking out your rage, which, you know, you've probably got some reason to be upset. This is not just this incident. And I understand this is a culmination of many, many incidences that have happened over time, some warranted, some not warranted. Um, but to take it out on 20 businesses, what message does that put out there? That's where I kind of go tilt is that, okay, you've got your racial justice message, but bashing in storefront windows, 
that does, there's, there's no real cause and effect there. You're just lashing out with more violence. So if you think that's a good call, I'd probably really recommend you rethink that because we're going to have a bunch more people get killed this summer. We just are, right? I mean, it's going to happen. We had it happen last summer and you're going to have it happen this summer. Brooklyn Center Mayor Mike Elliott announced a citywide curfew until 6 a.m. local time while all school buildings have been closed and local events set for Monday canceled. We want to make sure everyone is safe. Please be safe and please go home, he tweeted. He also tweeted how all the protesting was peaceful, and yet he was wearing a full-on military helmet. I mean, he could take a, take a shot to the dome and he'd probably live through it, right? So that's what we've got going on. Um, got a lot of unrest out there. And I think, I think Seattle, I think Portland, I think Portland will get it probably the worst because those guys are always revved up to it's always go time in Portland for this kind of stuff. So I, I think you will see that happen. And I think you will start to see some of that nightly stuff. Plus, the weather is getting better. It's easier to be outside in the Pacific Northwest. People want to go outside. They want an excuse to go outside. Minneapolis, that city, I think, is just going to get rocked. I really do. I mean, any which way. I think you're going to have at least one acquittal of Derek Chauvin, if not a couple more. And if you have a couple more than one, oh, you only got three charges anyway. It's going to be, and I think one of them is basically already out, right? Um I think it's, it, I mean, this is going to be a repeat, if not 2.0 plus greater from last summer. I don't see any way around it because it's not like we, we really resolved anything. What did happen, and I've talked about this so much, what did happen is like 200 and I think 40 police agencies across the United States, they did some sort of defunding of their de police departments. So you've got less cops on the street handling this at a time when you probably most need them to keep the other citizens not involved with the rioting safe, the other businesses not involved in the rioting, the innocent businesses that just get their storefronts broken out. And like the window I just saw, I mean, that's an expensive window. We talked about Nordstrom's windows being like 50 grand a pop. We're, we've been talking on this podcast about how insurance companies, they're only down to a couple insurance companies in like downtown Portland and downtown Seattle that will cover them for insurance, commercial insurance, because there's been so many claims of the peaceful protesters bashing in windows and businesses going, well, I've got to have a window. I need to be able to keep my store secure. So I got to make a claim or businesses saying, yeah, my threshold now for making a claim is like 30 or 40 grand because otherwise I just got to pay. I just, I just, it, it doesn't make financial sense to make that claim. I'm going to lose my insurance. You make one insurance claim on a commercial insurance, your insurance rates are going to go through the roof. They just are. Nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about this stuff. So if the peaceful protesters uh, keep this up, I'm going to I'm tempted to go down there today and just see what the, this damage looked like. Um, but there's only so much I can cover and I want to get out these podcasts. And so I, you know, I can only be in one place at one time, unfortunately. And uh, I'd love to go down there. I probably will later this week. It is getting warm. It's nice to go outside and do a little, um, do a little recon. I've got a good video coming out that I think you'll enjoy that I shot and recorded and it's a chop update and I uh, went and walked around chop because I the way I understood it, the concrete block barricade with the cyclone fence on top of it in front of the East Precinct that just got rocked during last uh, year's summer dem demonstrations during CHOP. That I had heard had been taken down or plans were in the, the works for it to be taken down. I'm glad they didn't. Um, because I think you need to leave that up all summer. Seattle Police Department, that's what I think you do. I think you don't give a damn about the pedestrians trying to get around the sidewalk. They can walk across the street. There's sidewalks every which way around that um, police department. There's one to the southwest of the police department. There's one on the northeast corner. And then there's one onto the northwest corner. Yeah, people can walk. They can walk. They can get around. Police, Interim Chief uh, Adrian Diaz, don't take down that barricade. I, I think that's a no-go. Leave her up. Leave her up. That's my opinion. Let the building be safe. 
I'm, you know, that's where I'm at. I'm a real estate guy. I actually care about buildings. I don't think it's uh, something you should just be destroying. I care about people's lives as well. But when there's already been one life, additional life lost here, I don't think you need to go after more with your violent writing. I really don't. But that's going to happen. That is not where we're at. And this is going to happen. And more people are going to die, more buildings are going to get broken into more businesses are going to get jacked after a very difficult 2020. And, um, you know, beginning of 2021, just brutal times for, for all involved. And I, I don't see this just going away. Hey, Sean, do you think it'll disappear? Disappear? Hell no. No, I think I think we're off to the races. I really do. And um, I'm going to cover it for you right here on the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. You know how much a, a round trip ticket is from Seattle to Minneapolis? $147. Do you want to know why I know that? Hmm, Might have looked it up. Might have seen what's going on. Do you know how much a flak jacket is or Kev- Kevlar bulletproof vest? Oof, those are getting expensive. Makes up for the cheap plane tickets to Minneapolis, right? No, I don't know. I don't know what we'll do. I think uh, Seattle and Portland, I might go down to Portland, cover some of the action down there because I think that is going to get spicy, people. Spicy. I think it's, we're going to let the criming begin. We're going to let the peaceful protesting with their message, whatever that may be, whatever message they're trying to get across by breaking into businesses and uh, graffitiing it up and just basically destroying everything in their path, including the parks that need a bunch of a bunch of uh, rehab, rehab to a public park. It's just that, 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 that should just be so wrong on so many levels. And yet it's not. Okay, that's it for me on this one. I know this is a little bit of a shorter podcast, but couple of stories. I just want to start kind of getting the intro in there. And um, we're going to talk about this a bunch because this is a happening and this is not going away. I'm probably also going to start covering some of the um, the Derek Chauvin trial because I think that I think that brings a lot of eyeballs to it. And I think people want to know, hey, what do, what are we thinking there? I've let the um, the trial go as far as the prosecution. I wanted to just kind of see how that goes. Um, but I think now that we're down to the defense uh, turn, we'll take a look at that and maybe, you know, I'll do a podcast every couple of days and just kind of keep you guys updated on uh, on what we think is happening. And then during the uh, the acquittal, maybe or not, not the acquittal, um, the sentencing, whenever that happens or the uh, the jury announcement of what they come up with. Maybe we do a little live stream, something like that. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But um, these stories are important. They're out there. What does this have to do with real estate? It's got to do with people, what people have going on, businesses and downtown areas, how people are perceiving this, other communities involved. You're going to have these riots break out. We're going to cover it. All right. So that's it for me on this one. Sorry, there wasn't a lot to laugh about. Or um, I think this one's this one's kind of a more serious one. Somebody lost their life. A kid lost his life. And um, now we're going to have to deal with the repercussions, whether you believe it was just or unjust or however you want to look at it. Uh, same thing with the George Floyd. We just take the issue head on, see what's going on. And we talk about it. It's what we do here in Seattle Real Estate Podcast because we're reasonable. Sometimes we're right. Sometimes we're wrong but we talk about it. It's what we do. It's what we're doing. All right. Thanks so much for being here. Love to have you subscribe. It's what makes this thing go, right? Share that content. That's the best thing you can do to support me is just, if you know somebody that you think might, this might be interesting to send them a link, send them a, you know, that little funny link from uh, YouTube, find that link in the description, send it on to them, say, Hey, here's this ridiculous real estate guy. He talks about stuff. Nobody else really does because he's half crazy. All right. Thanks so much for being here. I'll catch up with you guys in the next one. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out. 